Let's move on to our next team here. And that would be, my friend, a team with a brand new head football coach. That would be the Colorado State Rams. Now, Colorado State, Jay Norvell uh, leading this team now. He was Nevada's coach last year. Steve Adazio was the man on the way out, of course. Uh, this is going to be a completely different team than what we saw from the Rams last year. Uh, they do lose their quarterback, uh, big quarterback, uh, Rashad Ajayi. Uh, the tight end, Trey McBride, who ended up going, I think, in the second round of the NFL draft. They lose uh, a defensive end, Patchen, defensive tackle, Manny Jones, cornerback, Cameron, um, a, a whole lot. But they bring in a ton, just an absolute ton. Uh, they brought in 11 offensive transfers, seven defensive transfers, and two special teamers. Like, this might be a quicker turnaround than I was initially thinking. They went 3-9 and nine last year. Their post-game win expectancy said they should have been 6-6. Six and six. Like, it, they, they lost some games that they absolutely had no business losing last year. <laughs> but it was a completely different philosophy, um, which is why bringing in transfers was important in this situation. They are number 108 in returning production, and I don't know that that necessarily matters in this situation. Um, the offensive coordinator, Matt Mummy, Everybody knows how Mummy, uh, he and Mike Leach kind of put together this whole air raid thing that everybody's doing now. And Jay Norvell swears by it. He did it at Nevada. He's going to continue to do it. Uh, under Adazio, Colorado State ran the ball 56.6% of the time, and 63% of their passes went to tight ends or running backs. Norvell's offense at Nevada, they threw the ball 63% of the time, and 66% of those went to wide receivers. This is a massive offensive uh, philosophical difference here. Um, the offensive line is almost entirely transfers. Brought in a bunch of guys, you know, from Nevada that followed over Jay Norvell. Uh, they should be able to pick up a new philosophy pretty quick, I would hope, I would think. Uh, as far as the defense goes, like, they've got some incredibly talented pieces on the defensive line and in the linebacker. The front seven, uh, pretty good. Devin Phillips, uh, Daquan John, or Jackson, excuse me. Um, but keeping them healthy is vital because there is zero depth on this team, as far as, like, talented dudes. Uh, the secondary is being rebuilt. They're going to have to find a way to limit explosive plays. They were number 107 in that metric last year. Um, man, when I look at that, like, 11 Nevada football players followed Norvell over to Colorado State. Uh, that's a that's a relatively new thing. So, yep. you know, I'm, I'm curious what that's going to mean. Uh, I don't have any real idea what to expect from either side of the ball here. But, uh, you know... I'm I'm interested in the defense being able to provide the same stability that they did last year that actually kept Colorado State in games because they were number 27 in the country in defensive PPA per drive. Uh, the offense was just the biggest issue for them last year. Uh, I've got this team at five and seven, Chris. Like I I think they're going to be a little bit better than they were last year. I I just don't know that they are quite there yet. Like first year rebuilds are always really really tough, even when you're bringing in transfers. Uh, but five and seven would be an improvement over three and nine from last year. So how do you feel five about it? Five and seven. I, God, man, we're we're cheating off one another. I've got five and seven as well. I think this team has a chance to be fun, exciting. Um, I don't know how good the offense will be, but they'll be more fun to watch than they have been. That's yeah, that's that's where I'm at. Like the offense, you know. If you liked throwing the ball to the tight end and running the ball directly in between the guard and the center, um, you know, yeah, that was Steve Adazio's thing. And it, the problem is they weren't very good at it. They were number 114 in rushing success rate last year. <laughs> like, it's just, just absurd uh, thinking about it. But they, like, that team could have been really good or, or at least more competitive than they were. And towards the end of the season, I mean, that team had just quit which is why Adazio got fired after his second season. Like, they were really competitive early and then just, I mean, got whipped at the end of the season. Just it was just unbelievable. So, yeah, it was time for a change, and Jay Norvell uh, knew that there was not enough support at Nevada, and at Colorado State, he is going to get it. You don't normally see, you know, teams in the same conference, especially G5 conferences, uh, steal coaches. From one another, but that's the level that they're at, right? Colorado State is just a level above Nevada uh, as far as you know 
alumni support, booster support, etc. Like it, Colorado State wants to be one of the big boys. So there you go. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.